Welcome to a special edition of the Christy Taylor Show. Yes, I know it's a Thursday and we are live, ladies and gentlemen, here on Facebook and YouTube and across some other platforms. So this is an opportunity for you to get in on this conversation. Now, Wakanda forever. Oh, my God. That's the energy that we're all in. And our actress, writer today, who's my special guest, our author, she is definitely one who's been featured in a number of film, television and theater productions, including Cobra Kai and the popular American fantasy Netflix drama Legacies. Also, she appeared in the NBC show Southland and the comedic show Boomerang. She was cast as Nicole in the ABC television series Queens and played Miss Gold in Respect. That's the biopic of Aretha Franklin, the one that starred Jennifer Hudson. Now, in 2018, Abba wrote, produced, and co-directed her first film titled The Womb. And in 2022, this month, Abba will appear in the highly anticipated sequel to Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And yes, if you've been to the theater, yeah, she's going to let us know what character she played. Now, most recently, Ava has been cast in the role of Abina in the new Oprah Winfrey adaptation of The Color Purple that's due to be released in 2022. When I tell you that Ava has been busy, yes, she's also appearing in Netflix upcoming drama, Bad Monkey. I want you to help me welcome to the Christy Taylor Show special edition, Abba. It's Abba. Hey, hey lady. <laughs> hi. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. No, you this is an honor to me. You know, actually, I have been really trying to get into, you know, more streaming live because usually I tape a show once a week. So this has been like extra special when your publicist hit me up and like, you know, the movie's coming out and we want to make sure. I was like, yes, yes, yes. And there's yeah. another gentleman who's in the movie that I'll be chatting with tomorrow. So you're Who my person. And I'm his excited. name is Jay Wells Jr. He was in the stunt. He was part of uh, the Mambuka tribe. Mbaku. My my body. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes. So I feel extra special. But you know something, first of all, you've been very busy, but I want to kind of get into who you are, where you're from, all of that. Uh, because we're gonna be best friends by the end of this conversation. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. So well, I'm Ava Arthur. I mean, thank you for the intro. I I have been working, I've been busy. I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa. Uh, we moved to the U.S., my family and I, when I was young. So since living in the U.S., I've lived in Colorado, most recently in Los Angeles, and now in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, Atlanta. You know, Memphis is right up the highway. And, yes. you know, we always say that it's the Memphians who left Memphis that moved to Atlanta that gave Atlanta its flavor. So just know... <laughs> Just know that. That's okay? true. That's probably true. It's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. So just know from back of the day, but there's a there's a wonderful relationship that Memphis has to Atlanta. And of course, we're trying to maintain that relationship, of course, um, through the creative arts. And so being in Atlanta, can I say that um, you all have been very, very busy. Now you said that let me go back to this uh, this bio real quick. I just gotta go back. Let me let me go back. Everything from film, television, and theater. Netflix seems to be your home. NBC, ABC, <laughs> films, Jennifer Hudson, what kind of, okay, uh, so help me understand, Ava, how did you first of all fall in love with theater, television, and film? You know, Christy, I think it's always been there. Mm -hmm. I don't remember a time where I was like, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I just, I've always been this person. I was always the kid that was writing something and making something and, you know, always, but it wasn't until I got to college that I realized it was a career field mm -hmm. and you could make money off of it. Well, hopefully. <laughs> and so well, that's when I really like joined in. Right. So, you know, I will say that you have been doing a lot of work in the last couple of years, but I just want to roll it back to, did you go to college for this undergrad? You know, let's give us that. Of course, if you all go to her website, you'll get all the information, but I yes. want her to kind of chat it up. Cause her, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, her, her website is fabulous. So go to the oh, website. Go to the website. You so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. I have my bachelor of fine arts degree in performing arts. So I studied acting. I studied theater. I studied dance. I studied film directing building stages, we did the whole thing. So yes, that's what I have. I have my BFA in performing arts and I also have a BA in political science. Wait a minute. Okay, combine <laughs> those for me. Combine. You know, 
<laughs> Honey, help me understand. It's a rare combination. I know. I don't meet a lot of people who have it. But you know, I always say, if you really think about it, I mean, politicians are actors. There's a level of performance that you have to have when you have a message to spread it. And so I was a part of an interactive theater troupe that's very close to my heart. And we dealt with a lot of political issues. So we did theater surrounding a lot of different social and political issues. Um, and so I got a chance to combine the two, but there's definitely an activist part of my heart and my life and my brain. And then there's a creative part. So I combined them. Well, I love that. You know, and when I'm thinking about artivism, I think that's the new term that everybody's oh, using. Oh, yes. Art that's of it. good. Yeah, yes. artivism, um, you know, beginning to blend the arts with, you know, activism. And we have a lot to be, you know, uh, concerned about. And what are some of your particular, since you brought up the political as your political aspirations and the blend, the organization, what do you all focus on? So the Interactive Theater Troupe, it was my organization that I was a part of in college. And what we would do is we would focus on, I like to say all of the isms, any ism. So any issue that affects a group of people, um, it was a very diverse group. So we would, we would write a lot of our own things. We would bring a lot of any issues that were going on on campus. Um, we would bring it to the audience so that we could talk about it. We would have different skits and then we would actually stay in character so that the audience could ask us questions in character, which right. got really juicy and really spicy. Um, wow. But shout out to Trent Norman and Rebecca Brown Edelman who founded that. It's very close to my heart. And it's something that really changed my life. Wow, Abba, I love that. And in, in, in college, oftentimes is the space where we develop our path and you know propel you forward. And it appears that after college, you're like, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. So was it New York first? Where did you land? It was to LA. It was, it was so LA. You, you went straight to LA. I went straight to LA. I think I moved. It was like a week after I graduated. That was my plan all along. I knew exactly okay. what I was doing. So yeah, I graduated, my mom came, we packed up and I moved to LA. And then I started looking for an agent and you know, sent, submitting myself for auditions. Like I, I jumped into it immediately, no time to waste. You know, I'm giving this backstory because there are a lot of people who are watching. And for those who are watching, this is live. This is not pre-recorded. So you can actually join in the conversation, drop comments, questions. Um, is that a lot of people in Memphis, you know, have, as I say, that relationship with Atlanta based on the music. But now with Atlanta becoming Black Hollywood, we're starting to see that trek back and forth between those two cities on that. And there may be somebody who's at the beginning stages of their career, straight out of college or that non-traditional person who's like, I'm going to give it a go at my 30s or 40s. What are some things that you can just share with us um, as you began your career in Hollywood? Well, I think they're very practical things. And then there, there's the emotional aspect. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to start with the emotional aspect, because I feel like if that's not together, then, you know, the logical and practical things don't really make sense. Um, but emotionally, it is a ride and it is a journey and your skin has to be very thick. So I always encourage people at the beginning of their journey to make sure that this is what you want to do, mm -hmm. because we don't know how long it's going to take and you don't know what you're going to have to go through to get it. But make sure that this is what you want to do. And this is your purpose and your destiny on earth in some way, shape or form. And when you know that, then it'll make the nose a little bit easier. Easier is probably the wrong word, but you can kind of digest them because you know what your goal is. Um, so I feel like the emotional preparation is just as important. And then the practical and physical preparation is really just persistence. You know, you find Google is my best friend. You can find agents on Google. You can find everything. There's social media. So really finding out agents and managers in your area who can represent you and then submit over and over and over and over. Find different surrounding areas. If you're in a small city where there's maybe a larger market, submit over and over and over. At some point, somebody will Say pop yes. out and give you a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not been their social media. You can put your own work on there. Yeah, There's country so has proven that. I mean, many people have yes. started from chat, but uh, do it for the for, do it for the vine back in the day when the vine yeah. <laughs> do it for the vine and then Snapchat, exactly. and Instagram, and TikTok. So yeah, there are many many platforms 
that you can do that short films as well. So yes. what was your first yes? That really was like a strong yes for you. Yeah. So I moved to Los Angeles and I submitted to, I need to get this number right. I believe it was like 370 something submissions <gasps> to agents and managers. Wow. Um, and I remember so well because out of that number, I got three responses and one meeting. And I went to that one meeting and I got signed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over 300 submissions yes. to managers and agents, yes. three responded. Three and responses. One. And I got one meeting and they signed me. That was oh, my wow. first big yes. And I mean, it was it was a blessing, but also kind of set me up in a way of expecting that things would happen like that. Yeah. Although I came in with fire, yeah. I think it set up my expectation new in LA that if I just hit it hard one time, I was going to see results. And that's not true. I learned that pretty quickly afterwards. Sometimes you have to hit it hard over and over and over again and really work at not getting too discouraged. You know, there's a lot of no's in the entertainment industry and truly acting is one of those spaces where the no's outweigh the yeses. But when you do finally get that yes, it can be life changing. What was your life changing role? where you knew like, oh my God, here it is, whether it's theater, film, or television. Wow. Um, it's just so hard to say, because I feel like all of them, mm -hmm. and I, this is not an exaggeration, I feel like every single performance that I've had has shaped me in a way. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much about myself, about people, the character that I'm playing, about my scene partner, about the craft, about writing every single one. And so I guess internally, they've all been that for me. Now, I think for the world, you know, yeah. obviously, as we start to use names like Jennifer Hudson, or, you know, Ryan Coogler, when you say obviously yeah. Oprah Winfrey, the color purple, then yeah. other people start listening. Right. But for me, every time is it. You know, I know that um, the switch from LA to Atlanta is has become the thing, particularly for black actors. Um, what made you decide to take that trek south? Well, it's a big move, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it's a big move weather-wise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the traffic is pretty much the same because I live in LA for a second yeah, and I visit yeah. Atlanta. The traffic is pretty much the same, yeah. but the weather is different. The weather is different. Well, as you said, I mean, this is becoming the hub for yeah. Black Hollywood. And I was actually very surprised as to what the industry was like here because I think sometimes in Los Angeles and in New York too, you get into a little bubble. So mm -hmm. coming outside of that and really visiting and seeing what was happening here, I was like, oh, oh, okay. Well, let's see what's going on in Atlanta. And I'm so, so, so glad, not only that I came here, but that I stayed. Okay, so when did you make this shift? And I'm just kind of trying to track all this activity <laughs> you've been having lately. <laughs> I mean, that was wow. 20, I don't even know, 2016, 2016. So you were one of the. Oh, are you there? So it appears that there 2016, that you were one of the early ones who made the shift from, because I know quite a few people um, I, at some point uh, around 2016, 2017, I remember like when Tisha Arnold was doing her um, Survivor's Remorse and it was being filmed there yes. or Tyler Perry's latest studio was completed and there was some buzz going. So you were actually landed, you really came early, you technically, because most people have been coming yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously, thank you to all the people that were here before me that really set up the way that the entertainment industry runs here. I'm very grateful for that. But that's true. By the time I came, um, you know, self submissions and so on and so forth were really taking root here in Atlanta. So I feel really grateful to have been at somewhat of the second genesis of the entertainment industry really booming here. That's true. So, okay, so you are now a part of some really big shows. Southland, uh, you know, series, let alone movies. Can you just kind of give us an insight to how you select 
as a, I'm going to get to the writing aspect, but as an actor, you know, it's very important how you build your resume. So what's your driving force when it comes to that? I have an incredible agency behind me. I'm so grateful for them, Stuart Talent Atlanta. Um, my agents and I sat down very early on and really discussed where I wanted my career to go. Um, I'm, I just have so much gratitude to them for really, they're almost looking out for me before the projects come my way so that by the time they do come my way, it is something that is close to my heart. Um, it's really important to me to make sure that stories have obviously some, some sort of a message or even within the character, there's something that people are learning and there's some way for people to grow through it. That's really important to me. Um, and I'm just, I'm a fan of the creative arts and I'm a fan of writers. So I love, I love reading scripts and I love seeing what people create. And even if it is something that is not right for me, I still want to read it and I want to be a part of it somehow if I can. <laughs> like speaking of writing, I, as, a, as an actor who loves to read writing, screen scripts specifically, whether it's for the stage or television or film, you spoke early how... Was that nurtured in your college years or was it just a natural progression of your own artistic uh, creative approach? Oh, Christy, sorry. Can you repeat that again? I think I lost Yes, you. because, yeah, there was just a little bit of friction there. Um, yeah. I know that you spoke to about writing and was that something that was nurtured in college or was this a natural outgrowth of your cre own creativity? A combination of both. So it was always there. I've all, I just read a poem the other day I wrote to Whitney Houston when I was like 10. Why? I still have all of them. <laughs> I don't know. I was that kid. You know, I was that kid. So it was always there. But then I took a creative writing class in college that actually changed my life. What she said to us was we would go out into nature. She, my professor would set a timer. I, it, and it was something crazy, like 30 minutes. And we would have to put the pen to paper and we could not take the pen up off of the paper. It would affect our grade. So we had to keep the pen to paper. And she told us that even in the midst of writing, when you get stuck, you write, I don't want to do this anymore. I think this is ridiculous, you know, and just yeah. keep the pen to the paper. And it helps you mm -hmm. break through writer's block. So that actually shifted something in me as I learned how to write professionally. Because when you get into that sticking point or you think that you want to pull back, I don't take my pen off the paper anymore. I don't take my fingers off the keyboard. I just keep them there and I just keep the stream of thought flowing. And mm. then, you know, as you start to organize it appropriately, it, it teaches you how to stick in the story and really get to the heart of what you're trying to say. Okay, I'm a produced screenwriter and I, I you know, I also help other people, but you just gave me something that is going to that just changed my mind too, because and changed my life and my writing habits, because I do tend to allow myself to get stuck. So thank you to your teacher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, that really is um, something I'm going to apply to my own craft. Um, so what was the first play or movie or short film you wrote? Ooh. Hmm. Is that far back? Okay. We can <laughs> Well, oh, no, I do wait, wait, let's I talk do about womb, place. though. Let's talk about womb. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. The womb that that was my first produced um, film that I have. So <sighs> once I hit 30s, I realized that. <laughs> All right, 30s. People, no, okay, 30s. People have this very strange fascination with women's choices about reproduction. Yes. Why? And it's coming from everyone outside of the woman's body, right? It's, I mean, it's one thing when it's your significant other, but it's yeah. your family, that's another thing. And then your friends, your extended family, people want to know, oh, are you having kids? Are you going to have another one? And why don't you have more? Yes. Like, why? You know, that's a very, it's a very personal decision. And it's something that I believe should happen within a woman and whoever she chooses to procreate with, if that is her choice. Yeah. So after so many conversations with friends, especially during the holidays, Thanksgiving is coming up. So I'm so glad <laughs> that we're talking about this, especially during the holidays. Um, 
I have so many friends and myself as well that cringe at the thought of having to answer the question again. You know, yeah. when are you having kids? When are you having more? Why aren't you having more? Why? It's it. You have anxiety surrounding that. So yeah. the best way in which I know how to address things that really touch my heart is to write about them. Um, so the womb is a story about a number of women who are talking about their own personal experiences surrounding reproduction or childbirth. Wow. Where can we watch your movie, The Womb? I'm so glad you asked that as well. I'm in the process right now of getting it distributed and putting it online. So as long as you're following me on Instagram, Facebook, social media, stop by my website often, you'll get an update as soon as it's available. Wow, I can tell that's a passion project. Are you looking forward to um, producing anything new in the next year or two? I am. <laughs> Listen, I've got scripts on scripts on scripts on scripts, okay? I'm ready to go. There's a lot of story. I mean, I only write things that really, really stick to my heart. So I've got a lot of stories lined up and I'm really grateful, really grateful for this opportunity and time right now so that I can share them with the world. Well, DB is showing you some love. Thank you, DB. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, of course, I know we're talking about your journey as an artist and as a creative and as a writer. And, you know, you have just in your bio alone, of course, if you go to her imdb.com, not only can you Thank read you. her credits, ladies and gentlemen, you can watch her actors reel. Now, I'm all about that because I did. I was like, oh, let me see what she's been doing. <laughs> now, I will say that. Um, if we know we're going to get to the Wakanda forever because that just dropped. But can I say that I thought that I liked your comedic vibe on um, Boomerang. I liked your range that you showed on Southland when the police was trying to break the door down. Uh, but I also really was impressed by there was this one, um, I think it's Queens. Tell me about that particular character because you were playing opposite um, in that particular clip. Brandy at mm -hmm. Remy Ma. Yeah. Yes. Tell me about yeah. that because, you know, come on now. These are queens for real. How did Oof. you? Yeah. So give me that experience about wow. queens. Of course. So my character is a journalist and Remy's Ma character had survived a sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And so my character was there to question her. The intention was to get information out of her so that I could write the best story possible. Um, and I, you know, probably lied a little bit or fabricated a little bit of the reasoning why I was there in order to get information from her. Um, Queens, I mean, it was, it was a dream. It was such a great experience. I am a lifelong fan of both Brandy and Reverend Ma separately. So gosh, I just- I How did you hold it together? Back. How did oh, you- Oh my goodness, it was so exciting. I was, I listened, this is so corny. I listened to their music actually on the way to, <laughs> to filming that day, cause I was that excited. You know, I'm a professional. So if we're on set, let's do what we need to do. Where do I stand? What do I say? Let's get the shot. And then when the shot was over, I was able to lean forward and be like, ladies, you know, and have a moment. And when I tell you both of them were so gracious, they were so lovely, so kind. Brandy, just her voice and she was just singing. It was really a dream of an experience. I had a great, great day with them. I appreciate them. And all the crew, everybody involved, everyone was really great. Now, of course, I know we have to speak again about Jennifer Hudson and Aretha Franklin. Okay, now that particular movie was amazing. And yeah. your role, just kind of share about that experience personally. Yes. We're talking, about the Queen of Soul. we're talking about the Queen of Soul and we're talking about Jennifer Hudson, okay? I know. And I sincerely hope that there is somewhere one day, I'm going to look for it too, where we can see some deleted scenes. Because unfortunately, <laughs> my scene didn't make it in the oh. final cut. I know. <laughs> But um, same thing. I mean, it was the experience was actually a dream. Um, Lee Sol, our director, was very straightforward, very fierce, very focused, just in, an incredible person. And Jennifer Hudson, boy, oh boy, when she would just open her mouth to start singing, between her singing on set and Mr. Forrest Whitaker, preaching his lines on set. I was just in awe. I would just sit there and watch them. I'm taking as many notes as I can. 
it was like a master class being on that set. I just, I was in awe, literally. Yeah. Now, Ava, I, I love the fact that you, as long as you've been in the game before college and through college and the and the LA route, you know, taking the classes. I mean, I looked, I mean, when I tell you I did my research on you, I mean, you have been post college, you've been put in the training in and also, you know, really expanding your repertoire and your resume. I like your choices. That's why I was asking you. It was like, you know, you and your agency have been definitely choosing some good one and you're building a certain you know, look and feel, what is that for you? Like, what is your crowning jewel? What is that, you know, the calling card that you want in Hollywood for yourself? That I am a part of projects that matter. Art to me is like, like you talked about artivism. It is a mode to teach. And so what I really want to be remembered for and participate in are projects that matter in some way, shape or form, even if it's just one person that is touched or changed or is able to empathize with someone differently based off of a character that they saw or a story that they heard, uh, watched on television. Um, it's important to me to leave people with something that will change them or that will change their relationships. So mm -hmm. however that happens, I'm open if it's through comedy, if it's through action, if it's through, you know, a sit down one-on-one -on -one conversation across the table with someone, however yeah. that comes out, I'm open to it. I just really want the art to matter. I like that. And I think that's a good segue to one of the reasons why we're chatting today is because a piece of cinema uh, that matters is the Marvel comic book converted into a film, Black Panther sequel to Wakanda Forever. Ah, I just want to take a breath. Just take a moment because the numbers are crazy again. <laughs> The world has responded and said yes. Yes. yes okay. Yes, now, yes. there's a lot of different ways that we can approach this project. Um, well, first of all, I just wanted to, I'm going to take you back. I know when you got the call that you that you were in it, were you in the original? And you I wasn't. Up? No, I knew. I mean, Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, like every single other person, I was obsessed with Black Panther. So I, as an African living in the United States, knowing that there was a sequel coming, it's just, I was like, I, this, it has to be. Um, I, again, I'm so very grateful to my mm -hmm. agents for all of the work that they put in to my career and mm -hmm. building the platform that we have now. I got the call and I didn't really have a lot of time to react because after I got the call, I had to go to the fitting and then I had my script, went to sleep and was on set. So there was not time to really digest and process. And in hindsight, I am so grateful for that <laughs> because I don't know, I don't know if I had like a couple of hours to just let it sink in, you know, I might've been on this floor just laid out. So I'm, I'm actually really grateful. I think it happened that way for a reason. And I was able to come on set, you know, obviously you're there and you see everybody in front of you and like the whole world of Wakanda, which is just, is massive. Um, but it's like taking that in internally and then really putting your feet to the ground mm -hmm. and saying, and now I'm a part of it. Now I'm here. And now it's my job to help mm -hmm. everyone here tell the story. So focus, Abba, focus. <laughs> you know, it's two beautiful things that you've said. I mean, I, I want to go to the fact that you are from the, from the continent, as we say, from the continent, li living in America. And yes. we have a piece of cinema that speaks to the diaspora on a, such a, a marvelous level. And I didn't mean to say marvel, but okay, pun intended. <laughs> it. it works. Yeah. So as, as one who is actually Ghanaian, living in America, what is the, you know, because I'm African-American from, from, from another aspect of the diaspora, but I, I often wonder, and you've given me this opportunity, what do you all feel when you see 
um, movies, literature that does speak to the true African spirit. You know, I, I'm just, yeah. this is something I would love for you to, I mean, whatever your, ask, your perspective on it is, I would love yeah. that. Can I tell you when the first Black Panther came out and probably much like everyone else, I was sitting in the theater and there's that one shot where you zoom out and you see all the different people and all their different garb on like the side of the rock where all the battles take place. I remember so well that first shot when they zoomed out, I was in tears, I was a wreck uh -huh. because coming to the US as a child and being just brutally teased for my Africanness, which I'm very, very proud of. I wear it boldly and loudly. Yeah. Um, and to know that we are royalty, we are kings and queens, but because of the programming, we are taught otherwise. So to be able to see on screen what is reflected in us already, it just, it really was um, so touching to me. It was very fulfilling for me. And so naturally, of course, to be able to now be a part of the second one, it's like, oh. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. And, and I'm just looking at the fact that they're saying that Wakanda Forever, of course, totally took the box office. It's on record to do the same and dominate domestically and globally again. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Woo! Can I just say, yeah. I feel like, yeah. oh, <laughs> Yes. Ryan Coogler. Second, second weekend matters. Please come yes. out. Yes. Yes. So for you to be in Wakanda forever, I just, okay. So can you please share with us your character? And yes, yes give us details, darling. And Ryan okay, Coogler and um, Angela Bassett and everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so I play the naval engineer. I won't say much more than that for you guys who haven't seen it yet, but please go see it this weekend. Um, Ryan Coogler, wow, what an upstanding human being. Just brilliant and kind mm -hmm. and creative, thoughtful, direct, focused, mm -hmm. just, I mean, all the things. I found him to be so wonderful. He was such the, the best leader of that group of people, crew and cast. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see such a large, bright road ahead for him because he is really the best of us. Wow. And with you being the role that you were in, so that means that you probably worked with, um, I'm going to make sure I say her name right, Miss Wright. Uh, were you part of that particular, without giving the story? Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, I was. So who I did, was. Okay, so of the leading stars, who did you have a chance to play in the room with or opposite sure. of? Okay. I spent most of my time with Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke, who plays M'Baku. Um, of, the, of the leading cast, yeah, that's, that's who I spent the majority of my time. You know, that's nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> <laughs> and can I say they're both such wonderful lovely human beings and funny 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 a lot of jokes yeah there was some some good laughs on that set yeah that's so great both so I great can't i can't wait you know i'm i i, I wasn't going to tell off on myself but i've been crazy busy i've had friends who are like just giving spoilers like you haven't seen it yet because <laughs> i'm the type of person who typically want to watch it at midnight like whenever it first comes out or yeah, just yeah. be at the private screenings and i've just but when i tell you i'm probably going to watch it two or three times <laughs> yeah, yeah, it out. let me tell you this is amazing and and when you're talking about projects that matter you know we can go on forever about Wakanda forever, which we really could. <laughs> but yeah. I want to also segue as we get to this wrap up that you're also taking part of something that really matters. Oprah Winfrey loved it years ago. It was something that literally put her on the map when it came to in, well, to film, which was The Color Purple. We know the story. Steven Spiel, Quincy Jones in Chicago, sees her on TV, says this is our, and Steven, um, you know, the whole fat farm. I mean, if you know the story, she's her trying to lose weight, and they're like, if you eat another donut, if you, you know, we, you know, eat some donuts. 
So <laughs> she has definitely always shepherded this project. And for those who are watching, we are talking to Abba Arthur. She is an amazing actress and writer. Part of Wakanda Forever, if you have comments, be sure because we are live. Um, and now you're about to be a part of an adaptation of The Color Purple that she's doing. Of course, you did it on Broadway. So give me some details on what's really happening with this work, how it's coming yeah. full circle again. Yes, it's coming to screen December 2023. We're led by Blitz Bazwule, who is an incredible, incredible, incredible Ghanaian director, artist, musician. Um, he is our fearless leader for this project. He's done an incredible job. And of course, all of our producers, Oprah as well, um, they have recreated this story for the audience of today. So we have a little bit of time, but I'm so excited for you guys to see it. And the role that you're playing is Abina. Give us a little detail about that for this new generation who may not be familiar with the literature or the original um, cinematic piece, masterpiece, yeah. or the Broadway play. Okay. So for folks that aren't familiar, again, I like to avoid spoilers. So I will say that I'm a member of Seeley's family. Oh, that's a good way. Hey, read yeah. the book, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Watch the classic right. film. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. There you go, Bina. Yeah. So any last words? I mean, there's some, okay, first of all, ne okay, real quick. What are the <laughs> things that we, when I tell you this lady has been working, ladies and gentlemen, it's so many things we can, Wakanda forever. Make sure you go see her in Wakanda forever. Yes. Yes. Make sure y'all look for her. She's hanging out with the big dogs, okay, in the movie. <laughs> It's just so sweet and humble, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> coming up with the in the in the new version of Color Purple for the for the new generation. Thank you, Oprah, and those who are working on that. Um, but you also have quite a bit of work that's like on television, on Netflix, real quick, so they can also see where else they can see your amazingness. Uh, just run your resume real quick on what's happening coming up in the next uh, three to six months. Three to six months. <laughs> Next year is thick. I'm so excited. Um, yes. So I have an Apple TV. It's Apple TV. An Apple TV series coming starring Vince Vaughn. It's called Bad Monkey. I'm really excited about that. I'll be recurring on that series. You should see that in the spring. Yay. Um, and then I just wrapped on a film called Freedom Hair, which nice. is about the woman who created the first natural hair braiding salon. Her name is Melanie Armstrong. We're not, a lot of us aren't familiar with her story. So I'm really, really excited for the world to get a hold of that. Um, and then after that will be the color purple. So we have a busy year next year. Whoa, how do you keep yourself centered? What's your spiritual practices? Because you're just walking in grace, even though as you're doing this interview. So what's, what's your <laughs> practice? You. What's your, what's your you. level headedness? I practice yoga. Mm -hmm. I practice yoga. I like to wake up in silence. And I like to end the day in silence, meaning I just need my phone on do not disturb for as long as I can reasonably have it on. And I just go in, you know, I turn inside. So I think about the things, maybe something has been difficult or hasn't gone smoothly. And I try to figure out what part I played in that and how to do it differently next time. And the things that are going really well, I try to sit in gratitude and just think about how they came about and, you know, how far I've come. And then once I have that conversation with myself at the top of the day, I, you know, exercise it through my body so I can stay grounded. And then I pick up my phone. Let's get to work. What are we doing? What's happening today? Let's go. Podcast. Let's do it. Let's be Chris D. Taylor. You know? Oh, my God. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that I, and that energy is legitly real because I saw her. I'm trying to tag her on an Instagram post and she's already posted like podcast ready. I was like, oh, I love it. I'm, ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I was, I told, and I was on the phone. I said, Oh, let me jump off this call. I said, she's ready right now. Let me go put some more lipstick on. Let me, you know, let me make sure I have my light. Right. Yeah. I yeah, love this. Yeah. Be sure to tell yeah. your publicist. Thank you. A, a million times. M. Is that is that M? Yes, yes, M Ferguson. M, M was on it, and let me tell you that you are a joy. And any time now, this is our uh, streaming to Facebook and YouTube. But I have the Christy Taylor show. This was a special edition because we had to get you on here, honey, so we Thank can say you. Wakanda forever. Okay, yes, but anytime, yes. 
Anytime, Abba. Anytime. Thank you. Thank wow. you so much. Any thank last you for words you want to give to the peoples before you go? And thank you all for checking us out. Be sure to follow her before I say this. Be, um, be sure to follow her on her website, on all her socials. Uh, she says she has a new film that she's working on. Also, you'll be able to see The Womb. We got to find out when that's dropping. Yeah, 2023 is going to be lit. Now, any last words before you go, darling? <sighs> Thank you, guys. I mean, I'm on a journey, certainly, and I hope that you come along. I'm really excited about 2023. I got a lot of things cooking, so stay tuned. I'll be here. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Abba Arthur. See her in the new Wakanda Forever. Let's take the box office up a couple more million. Hit that billion. Yay! All right. <laughs> Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And tomorrow I'll be talking with another member of the Wakanda Forever cast. He's a stuntman and actor, Jay Wells Jr. But in the meantime, in between time, enjoy your throwback Thursday. <laughs>